Many islands and floating settlements can be found in the world. But the islands located in the Titicaca Peruvian Lake area are the most unique lakes and floating settlements, and are the only ones that can be found in the world. Unlike islands in general which are made of piles of soil, rocks and other strong materials, all floating islands in this area are made of reeds that grow in abundance in the waters of the shallow lake of Titicaca. These islands, are built from many layers of reeds which are constantly replenished from above as they decompose from below, so that these islands have a footing that is always soft and supple. Not only the island, even the houses that stand on it, boats, household appliances, crafts and so on, are also made of reeds. So that it can be said, Totora reeds, which grow prolifically and abundantly in this area which is located on the border of Peru and Bolivia, have become the main pillar in living life for its citizens. The Uru people, or Urosh, are believed to be descended from the first inhabitants who inhabited Lake Titicaca where they maintained a floating lifestyle for hundreds of years. They were forced to live around Lake Titicaca because they were evicted by the Incas who carried out a massive expansion into their land. They live around 120 floating islands which will likely increase or decrease over time. They built islands with the aim of being a place of refuge from other, more powerful tribes. What is unique, the Urosh tribe builds floating islands from Totora reeds which are endemic plants in this region, with the aim of the island being able to move and be moved to another place when there is a threatening attack. Unfortunately, the Incas eventually found their colony, forcing many of the Urosh into slavery. To make an island, the Urosh people make a firm but light base, which binds layers of reed roots that float naturally during harvest season. The reeds that float to the surface of the lake during the rainy season between November and March, are gathered by Urosh men whose job is to collect the best roots for their island. Next, they will bundle the reeds to form many layers, where they then tether the islands in one place with ropes and stakes, which are driven into the bottom of the lake. Islanders can maintain each island for up to 30 years, adding new layers of imparata once a week during the rainy season, and once a month during the dry season. The Uru people are known to have existed before the Incas and are known for their very unique life principles. They are descendants of one of America's most ancient cultural groups and only a few of their mysterious lives are known. They are a unique indigenous race, who migrated to Lake Titicaca around 3,700 years ago. Legend has it that the Uru people are descendants of the now extinct Pekina speakers. The Uru people left their mother tongue about 500 years ago, because they continued to trade and intermarry with the mainland Amara tribe. So now when the Uru people communicate using the Amara language, even though they lost their mother tongue they managed to keep many other unique aspects of their culture and traditions. Peru, is home to around 2,000 Urosh tribe, 
of which about 1200 of them live on floating islands in Lake Titicaca. For generations they have survived by a number of traditional hunter-gatherer techniques, such as fishing, bird hunting and collecting bird eggs. Some families even have livestock grazing on natural islands or on the mainland. Apart from that, they rely on reeds which on the other hand are the main material for building the island and their houses. Usually the Uru or Urosh people take the white underside of Totora reeds, and eat it for its nutritional and medicinal benefits, to relieve pain. The Urosh community, consisting of several families, who live close together, have an organized social system with tribal chiefs or local leaders who are responsible for communal decision-making. The Urosh people maintain their traditions and culture diligently. They are famous for their handicrafts, especially making handicrafts from straw, such as hats, carpets and jewelry. These handicrafts are one of their main sources of income. Meanwhile the children of the Urosh tribe can attend kindergartens and elementary schools in the Danao area. But for older children who wish to continue their education, they must go to the mainland. Apart from relying on natural products, currently the Urosh tribe also earns income through tourism. This additional income brings several changes to a more modern direction for their lives, such as improved sanitation facilities and solar panels that reduce the risk of fire. Although known as a tribe that adheres to ancient traditions and culture, they have embraced modern technology, with most islanders using cell phones and televisions powered by solar panels.